In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've set up this second brain personal knowledge management system, Zettelkasten note taking system. And this is something I've seen a lot of people talk about and found the idea really compelling. Um, and in particular, recently, I've been going down this research rabbit hole of making my own household products. So things like toothpaste, deodorant, shower gels, shampoos, surface cleaners, laundry liquid, and more things besides. And it's been an amazing sort of um, research rabbit hole. And I've needed a way of tracking the recipes and tracking my experience using these different versions of all these products and so I thought actually this is a perfect um, catalyst to get this off the ground and I've started putting this together and a big part of, of this is coming up with a format that you use in your notes to make this future proof and I, what I've come up with is a really interesting couple of simple really simple principles that I'm going to talk about in this video. Now all of the notes in this system I'm actually making available to members of this channel as a as a perk so up to now members of this channel have got early access to videos and a few members only videos but the reality is I hardly have time to do these videos let alone members only videos and um, so I'm really pleased that I can offer this as an extra perk to to members I'm super appreciative of everybody who's come on board so far so um, if you have any interest in any of the videos I've done on this channel you can become a member grab this uh, set of notes at, at that point in time which will be my up-to-date thinking on all of the ideas uh, on this channel so far there are currently a few gaps because obviously I've only been doing this for a few months as the channel goes way back, but I'm trying to backfill it with, with all the information that's uh, relevant and the current sort of position on all of those ideas. So the first kind of concept, and this comes from this idea of the Zettelkasten note-taking system, is you have this idea of atomic notes. To me, that just means one idea per note. Uh, a lot of people sort of think it means a bit more than that and, and will decide what kind of content goes into the notes. For me, I'm happy just looking at that as a way of saying a note is strictly for one idea. And that includes not putting sources in that note. This was a mistake I made early on. I was linking to sources um, at the bottom of a given note on a topic and quickly realized that that was taking away the utility of, of this system where I could link to those sources from other notes. Um, it was sort of attached to a specific note. So even going down as far as having a single source per note, um, that's the kind of granularity that we're talking about. And that's where the real benefit comes in because then you can just link from ideas to sources, sources to ideas and so on. So from that, we also add in a, a kind of arbitrary definition that a note shouldn't be longer than 100 words. Obviously, it's not super strictly enforced, um, but essentially it forces you to be concise with the way that you write these. You don't want to have to wade through kind of a, a waffly interpretation of an idea if you come back to this and you, you've forgotten completely what you wrote. It needs to be concise. And of course, if you can't write it concisely, it probably means you haven't got a really good enough grasp of the thing that you want to write yet anyway. So that that's a really nice concept so these are always small they're always on one idea per note and then it comes to how we actually organize them and create groupings and connections between them so obviously you could just kind of put some hot links between notes like i've done here uh, in line but i think there's um a further benefit to this linking between things and i've used this idea of depth as a way to organize these so quite often you know you have a kind of broad top level idea and then as you research the topic you'll drill down into more focused areas in that theme and that's where you can go down and, and list these new ideas uh, under a down heading so from this readme we can go down um, to using depth as a way to link notes for example so we're now lower down and i've seen other people who who design these systems and they come up with a sort of north south east west way of linking to other notes between their notes and this allows for a sort of next or previous horizontal traversal of notes and i think that's unnecessary because all i need to do here is go up and then i can see immediately all of those kinds of sibling level same level um traversal style links to to any of those notes and they're all on that level you can just choose one then so i think just going up and then seeing that is better than having to go left and right or next and previous um, through notes of the same level in in these um, kind of depth hierarchies. So I'm really pleased with the simplicity of just having up and down as the the basic way that we link to other notes from existing notes. And and so let's, let's just look at an example. So if I search for handwriting so this is uh, one of my kind of current research avenues i'm learning handwriting i've gone from cursive to spencerian and of course going further and further down this rabbit hole um, 
but it's it's an, a good example to show here in terms of where it fits in. So if we just like the first one that comes up, it's a source note. So I have the tag source here because all it is in this note is a link to some scientific uh, research that demonstrates that handwriting is better for spelling. So you can you learn spellings better when you handwrite the words compared to using computer or keyboard to type them out. And this is you know, fascinating concept. And there's actually quite a few other um, points like that, but I don't link to them from this note because I know that all I need to do is go up a level to this note, where which is the case for a pocket EDC notebook. Obviously, that's a broader concept. Um, and then, of course, we can see under the down heading, we can see all of these other notes uh, that were at the same level as the one we've just come from. So handwriting is better for memory, handwriting is better for spelling, understanding. Those are all discrete pieces of scientific research that prove those individual points. So they're all their own notes. Uh, of course, later on, I might link to those from other ideas in other um, kind of hierarchies, depth hierarchies. And then from there, I can obviously see these these two, which are just recently added. In fact, um, this is a original guide to learning Spencerian. And it, again, it's just a link to um, an archive, uh, Internet Archive PDF of this amazing old book that explains how to write with the Spencerian calligraphy style. Um, so again, you know, you can just see how this works. Let's go back up. So we're going to go keep going up. We can go to so higher than this one even. This is the augmentation role kit, you know, my uh, EDC. And then we can go even higher up than that, which is the top level of this kind of depth hierarchy, augmentation as a philosophy for EDC. And of course, you can see how that is such a very broad level concept. It's at the top of this pyramid. Um, and you can see actually there's only one down level here. And then as we go down into the pyramid, we'll find that we can go, you know, the individual lower level items tend to get um, increase in numbers compared to the top of the pyramid. Um, so interestingly, because we're working with plain text like this and with this super simple basic markdown style links between the files, if you open this folder in Obsidian, it works just fine. And this is just a good representation of sort of how future proof this whole idea is. You can open it in any application that's designed for working with notes in plain text. The only thing with the Obsidian version is you do need the Front Matter plugin to extract the titles from the notes and display them wherever Obsidian normally displays titles, which it's, it usually uses the file name for. But it, it does work fine with the graph view. You can see all of these notes and how they link together in the graph view there. If you prefer using Obsidian, then obviously you can, you can just open that and, and do that. Um, I actually prefer just using the plain text view. I think this NeoVim ZK plugin system works really well. So there's a command line tool called ZK that works in the folder, it creates its own little database to, to allow this, but um, I won't include that in the download when I share this. It's just going to be the plain text. If you want to run ZK command line tool, you're welcome to. And there's a plugin for the ZK command line tool to work inside NeoVim, which is what I'm using. And, and then of course, from there, it's just Markdown and standard NeoVim plugins for uh, presenting Markdown in a nice way. Um, but there's tons in here. Obviously, we've got full text search. Uh, so if we just search for EDC, we can see wherever that comes up. And there's all kinds of stuff in here to, to browse around. But that's basically the, the idea. Um, single idea per note, limited to 100 words, and then using depth as a way of organizing um, the concepts in here. And it's been fantastic using this as a kind of way of organizing all of my research and thinking so far. So hopefully that's, that's um, been useful if you're thinking of doing this. And like me, we're kind of paralyzed in terms of how to actually start, what kind of format to use when you're starting this kind of a system. By all means, just, you know, use, use this idea, use these ideas and, you, and develop on into your own versions. Um, let me know what you think of the, the Vault itself, if you're a member and you get your hands on it. Um, can't wait for your feedback on that. And I'll see you in the next video.